Ready to torch anything inside Unreal Engine 5.6? In the next few minutes, you will learn how to create fire from scratch, how to attach it to any static mesh, and how to change the color of the flames to create the cinematic masterpiece of your dreams. Let's play with fire. Here is the fire we will create. While you can light any object on fire, if you'd like to follow along with this tutorial exactly, you can find this free car model on FAB. Go ahead and download the FBX version. After that, make sure your plugins for Niagara and Niagara Fluid are enabled. Then we can go ahead and open up our content browser and right click to create a new Niagara system. Let's choose a minimal emitter since we'll be creating this effect from scratch. Let's name this NS underscore car. Now double click to open it. And let's add some particles to our system. In order to do that, under emitter update, hit this plus button and add a spawn rate. Let's go ahead and give it a spawn rate of 400. Now let's go ahead and attach these particles to our car. And we're gonna need to do that under particle spawn, hit this plus button and type in static mesh location. Now this is where we're gonna add our car. And I like to just pull this aside here and select my object in the scene and hit this folder button and that will select it in the content browser. Then I can go back to my Niagara system and hit this button to drop it into the preview mesh. And now we see the particles are taking effect in our car. Now one thing I like to do to make this view a bit more manageable is I hit this drop down menu and turn off orbit mode. That will give me the same commands that I have in my regular viewport, which is really nice. I also like to go to this preview settings and turn off show environment. And then I also like to make the environment color black. That just gives more contrast so I can really see what the particles are doing. Now these particles are appearing too big, so let's go to initialize particle here, back to our details panel, and let's change the sprite size mode from unset to uniform. And let's give them a random range float, and this will control, this will vary the size of the particles. Since this is a fire, fire is very spontaneous, so we'll be using a lot of random rain floats within this tutorial. And that's looking better. So I made the minimum a value of 5 and the maximum a value of 10. Let's also give their lifetime a random range float. And I'm going to make their minimum life 2.5 and their maximum 6. Nice, now we're ready to, at to attach fire to these particles. So what we need to do is under particle update, hit this plus button and type in set and find set fluid source attributes. That will allow us to link this to another emitter. So if you right click and go add emitter, go ahead and type in master up here and find this grid 3D gas master emitter and hit add. Nice, and now we see some smoke is occurring. It's not attached to our particles yet and we will get there. Now this looks really confusing at first. Let's just go ahead and minimize that. The only thing we'll need from this particle, we can just select from up here. And now let's go ahead and attach this smoke to our car particles. In order to do that, we need to go to source. Let's go ahead and use this drop down menu for sphere since we will not be using this sphere. Go ahead and turn that off. And under particle source type, change this from off to emitter. And in this emitter binding, this is where we need to put the name of this emitter here. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this and put minimal and then hit enter. And right now we're not seeing anything and that's because we need to go back to our minimal emitter, go to properties and change the SIM target from a CPU SIM to a GPU SIM. We're getting this little error here and that means we need to change the calculate bound mode from dynamic to fixed. And we see our particles are now taking on smoke. Now, not all the particles are taking on smoke and that's because our grid isn't big enough. So if we go back to our master emitter, let's go to simulation and let's increase this world size. I'm gonna make the X a value of 1000, the Y a value of 500, and the Z a value of 1200. Now we see all our particles are taking on smoke. Now they're gonna box out at the top, but we're gonna adjust the values so it won't be doing that. Let's go ahead and increase the quality of the smoke by increasing the resolution max value to 300 and the pressure solve iterations to 10. Now be careful doing this because it will make your computer, it because it is computer intensive. 
Now let's go ahead and add some fire to this. Make sure you're under simulation that the temperature is checked on and then go to render and under render temperature, instead of none, you can use black body if you want something really simple or curve if you wanna get more precise with it. We're gonna use curve for this tutorial. And right now we're getting something crazy. Now before we play with the actual curve, we're gonna change how the flames are behaving so that we can actually see the color of the fire. Cause right now it has much too, right? Cause right now it has too much gusto. So for the temperature range, let's go ahead and make this zero out of 10 and that will already affect it quite a bit. And let's make the temperature opacity 0.75 and the temperature color gain 0.75 as well. Now let's go back to the set fluid source attribute and the density is smoke and the temperature is fire. Let's decrease the amount of smoke. Let's make this 0.25 and let's give the temperature a random range float. I'm gonna make the minimum 0.02 and the maximum a value of 0.5. Nice. Let's also change the radius here and let's give that a random range float. Let's make the minimum five and the maximum 10. This is a good time now to put this on our side here. Let me go ahead and delete the fire that I had to start so that we can put the fire that we're currently making. And this is, I like to pause it in my viewport and just put it in my main viewport just so I can see how it looks in my scene lighting. So let's go ahead and push this all the way to the back so we're not using up compute time with this view window. And let's go ahead and open up our content browser. Go to where you put your Niagara system put it in my Niagara folder, and then let's drag and drop it into the scene. I'm gonna go ahead and zero out its location since my car is has its location also zeroed out. Nice, we can go ahead and turn off the sprite renderer in our minimal emitter. This will turn off these white spheres here. Excellent. Now let's go back to our master emitter here. Let's go to simulation and let's change the, des the density buoyancy. This controls how fast the fire or the smoke goes up and the negative will make it go up faster. And then if you make this a positive value, the smoke will actually go down towards gravity. I'm gonna make this negative 0.25 and I'm gonna make the temperature buoyancy 0.2. This will make it hover more towards the car, which I think looks better. Now we can go ahead and go to forces. Let's go ahead and check on turbulence one. And let's make the turbulence gain 150. This will make the fire so it doesn't just go straight up. It has some more diagonal movement to it. Let's also check on wind. I'm gonna make the wind direction one for the X value and one for the Z value. And let's give the wind magnitude a value of 10. This will also make the fire go in one direction a little bit more. Nothing like adding life forces. Now let's head back over to render. And this is when we can start playing with this curve here. Now, if you wanna make a really fun fire, you can make it blue. If you're feeling fresh, you could make it green. If you're feeling bright, we could have a yellow fire. You could have pink. This is where you can really go crazy. But if you're going for a realistic fire, you're gonna to wanna to take your time with this. You don't wanna use super bright white colors since it's already emitting a light value. It's kind of good to use some deep oranges and reds. And since this is a tutorial, I won't spend too much time getting it perfect, but I recommend you spend at least five minutes working on the color here. It's good to add multiple values. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up until I'm happy with the fire that I'm working with. And nice, I'm pretty happy with this. Now one thing we can do is go back to simulation and turn off the draw bounds to get rid of that red box. Now we have our scene set up. Let me go ahead and play this level. 
Yeah, this is some real-time fire with an Unreal Engine 5.6. It's pretty fun to see the car just light up in flames like that. If you made it this far in the video, congratulations. Not a lot of people do. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. That would help me out so much. And if you end up making something on fire, feel free to post it on YouTube as a short and tag me in it. I'd love to see your creations. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an amazing day.